Hi. <laughs> okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our weekly field hockey Zoom chat with head coach Char Moret Curtis. Char, thanks again for joining us today. Um, a trip out to Iowa, you know, the best team in the country right now, certainly one of the two best. And, um, you know, into a draw almost on Friday and Sunday, you know, they got steamrolling a little bit, but yeah. talk a little bit about the Friday game transitioning into the Sunday game. Yeah, you know, obviously they're an outstanding team, and uh, I thought that we played really good defense, uh, as did they. Uh, just could not get enough scoring opportunities on our side of the field. But, you know, I, I thought we really did some nice possession play in the first quarter. Uh, both games, Friday and Sunday, our second quarter was not our best. So, you know, that is a learning, uh, you know, learning piece for us right there. But, you know, I was really happy the way that, you know, we didn't give up. And right. especially on Sunday, I felt that we were capable of making some adjustments on Sunday, which in the first half, we just did not handle their midfield well. So we just switched our system and went to a three, four, three, instead of we were playing a three, two, three, two. So I felt that getting uh, Alina Voss or one of our top defenders up into the midfield area sort of helped manage that and then gave us more scoring opportunities in the third and fourth quarters. You know, so the girls were off on Monday. That's their off day. You had to practice with them. You've got to look at the film. We're heading into a weekend this weekend with again, two big 10 teams, but where, where do you see their minds, right? You know, we had an outstanding practice yesterday. They just were very, very focused. We, we started with a meeting with the captains first, and then we went to a team meeting and film session with the players and just really pointed out some of the tweaks we have to make in our defensive end and our offensive end, but we stayed together as a team. Generally, we split up positionally on Tuesdays, but just felt it was important to keep them together and um, just to let them know that you know, this is, this is the way the conference is. It's going to be a battle on Friday. It's going to be a battle on Sunday. So let's not like, you know, feel sorry for ourselves one bit. Let's just make the changes that we're going to talk about in the meeting and that we're going to really put into practice once we get on the field and probably one of their most focused practices and really felt like we accomplished a lot and their energy was high. So I would say really, really positive to start off the week that way. So two days before we play again, you know, we play on Friday. I mean, two practices before we play again. What uh, what are the things you want to see happen? I, is Wednesday normally a kind of a heavy practice day for you? No, it's usually Tuesday, but because Tuesday, we felt okay. that, yeah, because we felt that we had so much learning to do from the weekend that we just really went back to breaking things down and just adjusting our system a little bit. But um, today is going to be probably more of a heavier day with Thursday being extremely light, just working on set pieces for Thursday. Awesome. Awesome. So first opponent of the weekend, let's talk a little bit about the Hoosiers. Indiana was a team last year, record aside, played everybody extremely tough and they played season on the road. Yeah. I mean, holy yeah. cow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Kim's doing a good job there. They are playing everyone competitively. What do you see out uh, in the Hoosiers this year? And what is your team on alert for? Well, they, uh, they have two talented freshmen uh, that have come in. I think both are from Holland that really the midfielder is, number 15 is their playmaker. And then they have a dangerous attacker, but they're just, they keep their structure. They're very, very disciplined and playing zone. They just zone really all over the field. So, you know, we know that it, we really have to keep our passing game going, keep the ball moving, keep interchanging, keep leading, re-leading. So there's going to be a lot of movement on our part to really get, get between the seams. And then Sunday, Northwestern, they're ranked fourth. Uh, you know, they, they lost a tough game to Rutgers. They have Maryland Thursday night. They're in the meat of their schedule like the rest of the yeah. conference. This is a good Wildcat team. Talk a little bit about what you see in them and what you expect from, from them now. You know, you played them uh, neutral last year. Yeah, they just are very solid. And like, you know, from Fente Bakers and the top, you know, scoring is the top scoring threat. Um, you know, they, they Maddie Zimmer and Lauren Waters are two Pennsylvania kids that really do a nice job in the midfield. They have a couple transfers from Princeton that are graduate students that just give more experience to their team. Right. and and great goalkeeping. So, you know, for us, it really is going to be, again, a game where like we've got to really be on our toes in transition offensively 
uh, to defensively, defensively to offensively. Um, past two games, it's gone to overtime, uh, yeah. shootout last spring, and then double overtime the year before. So, you know, we know that it's going to be a game that's going to go, you know, wire to wire. Uh, so joining us here shortly, when you're done, will be Emma Spizak. Emma is senior plus. So, you know, she's coming yeah. back for that extra year we got last year. Yeah. It's a little bit your, your feelings towards Emma, the player, and Emma, the person off the field. Yeah, Emma just brings so much energy. And, and like, you know, Carl Olson, our sports psychologist, is always like, she's just the engine out there because she just, she's got amazing endurance. She's just got, with endurance is speed and heart. And so she really sets the tone for our press. So we, we, we love that she, you know, starts the game and really puts the other team under pressure, you know, especially their defenders. And then in the circle, she, she's ready. She can be dangerous in the circle. And um, again, like just ready in front of the goal. But, you know, off the field, I, I we, we have our players do the Peloton app for a lot of their outside fitness, you know, and for right. their you know, training. And I, I think I think she'd be a great Peloton instructor. <laughs> she's she just motivate people. She's got that you know, energy and she just, you know, she's a, a great, uh, you know, a great captain because she cares about her teammates on the field. And, um, you know, I think just this experience that she's had has really, you know, helped our team, um, you know, navigate the wins and, and be ready to rebound off the losses. Awesome. Well, Shar, thank you very much. Busy week as usual now, yeah. uh, heading into October. Looking forward to seeing you and everyone else at the field hockey complex this weekend. Yeah. I just want to say one other, one other thing. Go ahead. It's our alumni weekend. Okay. So we have a lot of alums coming back uh, Friday, you know, they'll be at the game and, and then Sunday we'll be honoring them at halftime. So we're looking oh, for, outstanding. yep. We're looking for a, you know, a good turnout by our alums and hope they can help uh, cheer, us, cheer us on this, this weekend. Outstanding. All right. Well, thank you, Shar, very much. Yep. And we'll talk to you uh, later this week. Sounds good. All right. And we're back now and we're welcoming senior plus forward Emma Zach senior who last year who's decided to come back and give us another year and it's been exciting so far uh emma thank you and first off what went into your decision making coming back for this extra year um well to be honest it was a pretty easy decision i felt very fortunate to be given the opportunity to make the decision and ultimately it was just the fabulous team culture we have um i had a great time with our team in the spring. And I was fortunate enough to be a captain and that leadership role really brought me a lot of joy. And I felt very, very confident and excited to come back. So we started out the season six and oh, and you know, last weekend was tough, right? We lost to a very good team. We are in the heart of this. We are in the thick of it. So as someone who's now been here, this is your fifth year of actively playing and starting and, 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 You've emerged into a captain's role. What do you do as a captain, as a senior mentor, to make sure that this past weekend is a learning experience and not a roadblock towards what we got to start doing Friday night? Yes. Well, Char luckily has always instilled in us that we're either winning or we're learning. And we love to be doing both winning and learning at the same time. But like you said, this weekend was tough, but the silver lining is that there's a lot of learning opportunities and we got to play them twice. And I think we made improvements, but there's still a lot of improvements to be made still. So the biggest thing that we always talk about each week is competing, constantly competing and proving our work ethic because work ethic and competition is both big parts of our identity. So if we keep doing that and as well as watching video and learning from past losses, then that's all we can do. And I think it's looking good going into this weekend. Outstanding. Has, has your role changed? You know, we, we, we are as a forward and trying to get that ball on cage. We've got so many talented players offensively, regardless of the abbreviated letter by their name on the roster, right? Yes. Has your role changed? Are you, are you a facilitator? Are you looking to be an offensive punch? Does it change from game to game for you? How are you seeing that this year? Um, I like to think of my role. Um, I'm very high energy and I yes. love to attack, but also a big 
part of the game is our press and we've been working on our press throughout the season and I like to be able for the girls to lean on me to bring that energy in the press and that high pace of our game so that hopefully I like to hope that it stays consistent throughout game to game but that's something I feel like I can bring to our team and our press. Outstanding well enough about field hockey <laughs> about Emma Spizak the person and the student you did you walk in in May you graduated? I did. I did. All right. So what was your degree in your undergrad? Public relations. And I also did the SMEAL business certificate. Oh, geez. Okay. That's great. <laughs> You're back. Are you in grad classes or looking at a second degree? I actually am enrolled in political science classes because I'm in the process of applying to law schools right now. Oh, that, <laughs> outstanding. Thank you. Is your ultimate then career goal being a lawyer? Or are you looking at corporate law? Tell us where you see that, what you see that potential law degree doing for you. Where, where are you going to be? Um, yes, my end goal is to be a lawyer. I'm not sure the quite the path of law yet, because right. usually you figure out that in the first year of law school as they prescribe all your classes for you. So you get a little taste of everything. But I'm excited because it's just another platform to compete in. And yeah, being a D1 athlete, that's one thing I love most about the sport. So I'm really excited to start competing in new things. <laughs> and so outside of the competition aspect of that as a career, was there anything else that drew you to that? Like when you got here, so you were a public relations major, what, what has occurred in, in your growth as a person that has now has you looking at law and, and not just the com competitive aspect of it, but was there something that said, this is where I want to go? Um, yes, I think throughout my time in college, I've been able to look at what my assets are as not only a field hockey player, but a person. Right. And I would like to say that I'm very passionate plus empathetic. And my mom, actually, she worked high up in an administrative role for our school district at home. And okay. she experienced a lot of cases working with underprivileged children who don't have the same experiences or resources that I've had. Right. And that's one path I'm definitely considering. I'd love to bring my passion and empathy for children who have not had the resources I've had and be able to defend them in a way. Awesome. I know that's, that's kind of broad, but my mom no, but really inspired that in me. That's awesome. But I mean, at this point in your burgeoning law career, it has to be broad, right? You'll narrow yeah at a point. That's great. Well, awesome, Emma. I know you got to get to practice. I want to thank you for popping in and joining us today. It's always great to talk to you. And thank you. I'm forward to Saturday or Friday, I mean. <laughs> yeah, me too. Ready to be there. Thank you. All right. Thank you.